I've been used to larger keyboards for most of my life with this guy being 75% board. But what if we could go with the smaller form factor instead? Keyboards. This is one of those often essential peripherals for everyone from creating software, writing emails, or even just posting random comments on the internet. Now, they all come in different kinds of shapes and forms, whether it's in an iPhone, a laptop, or even your desktop keyboard. So I've been rocking the Drop OKB Plank V7. Now, I've been utilizing this guy for probably the past few months now, and I think this is a great keyboard for programmers. So I went with the polycarbonate shell since I wanted some RGB lighting on the backside, as well as even being able to see the PCB on the inside, which kind of gives it that nice retro vibe that I really enjoy. When my friends do see this keyboard, or even my family members actually for that case, and they see my kid use it, they honestly think this is a keyboard for her because it seriously looks like a toy and a full-size one for when she holds it up herself. Now, I really like the fact that the keyboard is so tiny, small, and lightweight, and it fits so nicely on top of my laptop, and I can sometimes utilize this instead of my MacBook keyboard. Now, when I head to the office, I carry a MacBook Pro, headphones, my normal EDC bag, coffee, water bottles, sometimes even snacks, or my lunch. So having this board be so airy and light, that's really nice to be able to put this into my bag without feeling extra bulky and weigh it down too. The build process was fairly easy since this is the seventh iteration. So there are many, many build guides and tutorials already out there on YouTube. And since this is a custom keyboard, I can configure sort of any switches or keycap combinations that I want. I'm not super hardcore into knowing the different types of switches, whether it's my GMMK Holy Pandas or these Boba U4T switches, but all I do know is I think I'm going back to my old roots and really enjoying the various tactile switches I've been playing with over time. Now, to me, the board sounds kind of meh and mid, so I'm not too ecstatic about it, but I do like the type and feel with the tactile switches. So if you have any suggestions to making this board sound a little bit better or nicer, um, definitely drop the comments down below. So I'd love to hear what you have in your build too. Now on a day-to-day -day use, I gotta be honest with you. The first couple of weeks utilizing this board, it took me a minute to get used to it. Thankfully, they do include a piece of paper printout to help with that. Now, once I got used to it, the nice thing about this keyboard is it is QMK and VIA compatible, which means you can customize different layers or where you want your certain keys to go essentially. Now, as for in terms of use of productivity and getting stuff done from a day to day, it's great when I use this keyboard with Vim and VS Code, since the escape key is closer to my pinky and actually a lot of the buttons are much closer than a traditional layout. And I feel like I'm not straining or traveling my fingers too far to try to reach the delete key too. Now, I don't think I'd be able to game on this for the lack of number of keys, but let me know if you've actually tried gaming with this, especially if you only need like WASD and that's pretty much it. So for a total cost of $150, including the switches and the keycaps, yeah, it's a little bit steep to just try it out, I'd say, but I do have a good alternative for something that's actually way cheaper. So here is the Micro Center MK47 Wired Mechanical Keyboard. So this guy, you can actually pick up for 40 bucks. Had I known originally, I would have just honestly picked this up from the start. It also has RGB, you know, it does come with switches and keycaps. So for all in all, is this at the end of the day, a better pickup for at least four times less the cost? I definitely think so. But I would have to say the build quality is better, but four times better, I don't know about that actually. If I were you, I would just stick with the Inland MK47, which is pretty nice, um, especially if you just want to try out a 40% ortholinear keyboard. Well, if you found this video useful at all in any way or fashion form, definitely let me know in the comments down below by giving this a thumbs up, as well as subscribing or hitting the follow button so you can see what else I utilize these keyboards and how I use them whenever I program too. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.